The Catherine Deeves story is getting weirder and nastier than ever. She's, of course, the Liberal candidate for Warringah, Tony Abbott's old seat on Sydney's northern beaches. You'll have seen she did an interview with SBS, of all places, yesterday, and she mentioned some of the horrible threats that have come her way. I have received death threats. I have had to have the police and the AFP involved. Uh, my safety has been threatened. Um, my family are away out of Sydney because I don't want them to witness what I'm going through and nor do I want their safety put at risk. Well, this is ugly stuff, but I think it's unwise to talk about such matters publicly. Some media today have been getting into some bizarre victim blaming, effectively questioning whether any of this is true. Now, police typically stay pretty quiet on stuff like this and besides, the sorts of threats that have gone her way are, are out there pretty easy to find on social media, at the very least. Now, the Advance Australia campaigning group has marched into the Warringah contest by using this mobile billboard, which shows the so-called independent MP Zali Stegall as a closet green. That's a good point, well made, of course. And also, they have the issue of women in sport. They show three Olympic champions who have backed Dave's central argument that girls and women should not have to compete against males. And this poster also highlights Stegel's response that to raise such issues can be transphobic. Now, incredibly, Swimming Australia has complained about this, seemingly more concerned about the politicisation of a very real issue than they are about just having a decent debate and dealing with it. Sports organisations really need to confront this stuff sensibly. You have to wonder also about how the Green left media cover this issue. In the Sydney Morning Herald's uh, over the weekend, Chip Legrand has argued that this debate's been deliberately triggered and amplified by the Coalition to win seats in suburban and regional Australia. Well, apart from the fact that the major parties should all be trying to win seats everywhere, especially where there are marginal seats up for grabs, this stuff is a long way removed from reality. It ignores the fact that the vast majority of Australians, wherever they live, would support Dave's main contention. And I've shown you polling that demonstrates that's the case. And also ignores how Dave's was clearly told to try to avoid this issue by her Liberal Party advisers. She was told, obviously, to avoid this issue and concentrate on other election messages. That was obvious when she did her first interview after being endorsed as the candidate on this program. Catherine, I just want to hear your concerns about what's going on, especially in women's sports with these issues, what you think should be done to fix it and whether it will be a high priority of yours if you get elected to federal parliament. Uh, look, I've been on uh, your show and indeed Sky many times before. Uh, I think my views on that particular issue are on the record uh, and they are very well known. And while that issue is serious and it is important, uh, I think in this time of, of great uncertainty, uh, there are other issues that we really need to be focusing on. As I said before, uh, my understanding of what's concerning the people of Varinga are really to do with cost, uh, cost of living. And on she went. You know, you can just see the lines fed by the Liberal Party advisers. No, no, don't talk about that gender stuff. You've got to get on to the electorate issues. Of course, the people who have generated all the publicity about her so-called hate speech and transphobic comments and all the rest of it have been the green left activists, the leftist journalists and her political opponents. They've trolled through her previous comments to generate the controversy and demonise her. If they'd chosen just to treat her like any other candidate, and that is mainly ignore her, as they do most candidates, hardly anyone would have heard of her and there's no way she'd win the seat. It's those in the media and politics who are so desperate to cancel her and silence her views who have put her name and her issues up in lights. In that respect, she's an echo down the decades of Pauline Hanson. The virtue signallers who made Deves famous now claim she's the product of Scott Morrison's evil political genius, which is exactly what they said about Pauline Hanson and John Howard. And they portray Australia, these people, as two countries, the virtuous, tolerant inner-city lefties and the horrible, intolerant racists and sexists of the suburbs and the regions. And then they are flawed, 
when the suburbs and the regions don't vote the way they want them to. One thing is consistent about the Green Left and their media barrackers, and that is that they just never learn.